Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today we're looking at various 3D printing cheat sheets I put together, so hopefully you can find these helpful. So let's go ahead and get started. For those of you that follow the channel for a while, one of the things I like to do is put together various cheat sheets for myself, so that way I can just find the information really quickly, and I've shared those out over time. One of my most popular is my Clipper Calibration Spreadsheet. I get requests for that to be shared pretty regularly. And whenever I get on the sheet, there are typically other people using it, which is great. Now, recently I've added some navigation here so you can real quickly find your tests. I've realized really quickly that I got a whole bunch of tests here and a whole bunch of different things you can try to use to calibrate Clipper. And these are mostly more on the advanced side. One of the other recent spreadsheets I put out there is I went through and pulled out all the various recommendations from the Orca Slicer Wiki. So I just have those in one place. One of my issues was these are spread across a variety of pages and just trying to find everything turned into a bit of fun. Now, one of the viewers has asked me some questions about what to do when you first install Clipper and what tests need to be run. So I went to the Clipper website and pulled together from there the various startup checks you really need to do. And most of these are pretty basic. And just to see how they're done, I'm going to run this on one of my printers. I recently bought a used 4 on 2.4. And so let's run through the basic checks on that machine. So with that being said, let me switch over and we'll take a look. I've switched over to take a look at the Voron screen. And the first thing we need to check when you boot up Clipper for the first time, just to make sure everything's running, is you wanna look at the temperatures and see if they're actually reading ambient temperature. In my case, we can see here the extruder showing 25, heated bed 25, and heated chamber is showing or I'm sorry, this is in the heated chamber, but the chamber is still showing about ambient. And what that means is the thermistors are receiving readings. So that actually is pretty good. If we want to look, we can switch over to the web interface and take a look there. And we can see right up here, it's showing the same thing. And that's very good. We want to make sure that we're getting some type of temperature reading. Now, if the current is, temperature is showing zero, we want to go back over to the spreadsheet and take a look at our next steps. Now, in our case, it's telling us to run the M112 command. So I'm going to use the web interface and I'm just going to type in M112. And what that does is puts the printer in shutdown mode. And we have two choices then. We can hit firmware underscore restart. So I'm just going to copy that command. Now, in my case, in main cell, I could also hit it over here. I'm just going to type in the command. So we'll run the command. This will take a minute. The printer will reboot. And we again want to check those temperatures and just make sure that nothing's rising or changing. Now, in the spreadsheet, I put that what to do if, if it's staying at ambient temperature, we want to continue with our checks. If it shows the temperature rising or showing zero, we need to check our wiring and our configuration. So that's important to know. Now, in our case, everything's looking good. So I'm going to go down here and we're going to verify the heaters. To do that, we're going back over here to the temperature graph and I'm going to set the extruder to 50 degrees. And so I've set that and you'll see it's heating up really quickly. If it does not heat up within 30 seconds, that means there's an issue. Right now I haven't done any PID tuning and it's right around 50 degrees. So that's good. And let's zero that out. So we want to zero it out or hit the cool down and make sure that the hot end doesn't stay heated. It does cool down. As you can see, it is slowly cooling. So that's very good. For our next step, we want to basically do the same thing for the bed. So I'm just going to put that at 50. We just want to make sure that the bed heats up. And then when I tell it to cool, it cools down. So we can see the bed is heating. And we'll give that a minute. And this should reach in and around 50 degrees. It may fluctuate a little bit. And we can sort of stop that from fluctuating or help minimize the fluctuation with the PID tuning commands, which we'll do a little bit later here. And right now we can see the bed is heating. I want to let that go all the way up to 50, so we'll give it a second. Now, as you can see, the bed has reached about 50 degrees. So we're just going to go and change it to zero again. And let's just watch it for a minute 
and make sure the temperature starts to go down. The state set to off and it looks like, yes, it is going down. So that's all correct. Now looking at our check sheet, if it continues to rise, if it rises to 50 and then cools on off, we can continue. If the temp continues to rise or it doesn't cool when we turn it to off, we need to turn off the machine, check the wiring, the printer dot config. And then according to the documentation, we also want to look at the heater underscore pin. Now I should point out, I have links over here to the Clipper documentation so you can read what that actually says as well. So right now, the heaters look like they're working properly. And so let's work on the stepper motors. So let me change my camera angle a little bit so we can see things, and then we'll take a look. Now for my next step, I'm going to go over here to the console and issue an M84 command. The M84 will turn off the stepper motors. And what that means is when I come over here, I should be able to move everything by hand. So I'm very gently moving the various axes and just checking to make sure everything's moving. So that all feels good. And then let's look at our next step. So as long as everything's moving freely, we can continue. If it's not, what that means is probably you're going to need to look at the enable pin in your printer dot config and maybe put an exclamation point in front of the pin. Let me show you the printer dot config for this printer and so that way maybe you can see it. So I've opened up the printer dot config. Here's the X stepper. Let's say the X stepper wasn't moving correctly. You'll see right here on the enable pin, there's an exclamation point that inverts things. And if it wasn't moving, maybe I need to take out that an exclamation point save and restart. So just be aware that one of the things you need to do is physically move the axe around just to make sure everything's moving freely after the M84 command. Now looking at our checklist, since we're moving freely, we're just going to query the end stops. So I want to copy this command and I'm just going to hit copy and then go over to our interface in the console and I'm just going to paste in the query end stop command. Right now it's showing open. Now we'll notice on the printer, if we look at it via the camera, I've positioned everything in the middle. So none of the end stops are being touched. And that's one thing you want to check because I've run this command before and then forgotten or didn't realize that I was already triggering the X command where the X end stop and audit that was cause of confusion because I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with my printer and actually nothing's wrong. For this next step, this is going to be a little awkward. So we're back over at the spreadsheet. We've already copied the query end stops command. We're going to go over here to the dashboard and let me make this a dual view. So I've made a dual view. I'm going to enter the command in. I'm not going to hit it yet. I'm going to reach into the printer and I'm triggering the XN stop. And I'll enter the command. Now, if we look, the XN stop is showing triggered. So that's great. That's exactly what we want. I stop triggering it, run it again, and it's showing open. Now, I'm looking to see where the YN stop is. So it's down here in the corner. And I'm just going to trigger it and run it. And you'll notice that it's showing triggered. Now the Z, I'm not really worried about. That's using a tap probe that appears to be running all right. And so we've checked all the end stops. They're showing either open or closed as appropriate. And as you can see, we can do it here from the console, go over to machine, check it again, and everything's showing right. So that's actually looking pretty good. So let's switch back over to the spreadsheet and we'll Keep going. So our next check is going to be to verify the stepper motors in their direction. Now with the printer all together, this is a little bit hard to see and look at, but we're going to use the stepper buzz command. And we do this for each of the stepper motors. What this will do, and let's see if we can see it. It'll do 10 times where it'll move each stepper motor just a little bit. And we want to make sure that these are going in the proper direction. Now, in our case, the X would be going in the, I think it needs to go clockwise. If it's not going the correct direction, that's another one where you're going to come over to the machine and go to the printer.config and let's go down to X. 
And that's one where you might need to change the direction pin with that exclamation point to inverse it. Now, in the directions here, it also says what you need to do. So you can look at that. Now, I said it's moving one millimeter in each direction. So you need to look at it carefully. The next one you just want to do, I'm just going to do the Y stepper. So let's hit copy. Go over here to the console again, and we'll run that again. And now you can barely see it, it's moving backwards. And I just need to check each of the stepper motors. You want to make sure that each stepper motor is checked. So this machine would have basically four Z steppers. So I would start with stepper Z, stepper one, two, three, and four. I can check the numbering by going over to machine, going to the printer.config, and I just want to look at each of the steppers here and make sure I check each one. Now, in the case of Z, usually it's stepper Z, then there's a Z1, Z2, Z3. So we want to make sure we check all those. So that's pretty easy. And again, we just want to make sure that each of them are moving. And if they are moving correctly, we can go ahead and issue a G28 command. So just at the interface, or better yet, let's go over to the printer and I'll just run it from the screen. So I'm over at the screen. I'm going to go to Move, Home, and Home All. Now I want to watch this carefully to make sure that it doesn't ram the bed or do something else squirrely. But I can see just by looking at this, everything's moving in the appropriate direction. The tap is working. So that's great. We're good to go here. And on our next step, we're going to be taking a look at the filament and how that works. Now at the top of the console here, and I could do this from the screen as well, I've heated it to my normal printing temperature. I loaded some PLA in. And as you can see down the bottom, we have filament coming out. Now, apparently the last time this was printed at green, I've loaded in red. So I just want to extrude till I get the red coming out. And this all looks correct now. I can see the red. There's a 0.6 nozzle on there, which I normally don't use. So I'm excited to try. And I can see the filaments coming out and that's looking pretty good. So the extruder is going the proper direction now as well. And I want to let that finish and then clean out under the nozzle. So I just want to clean this out, being careful not to burn myself. Let's cool the nozzle down. So I'm just getting via the interface. I'm just going to hit cool down. So that should bring everything back down to ambient. And then for our last check, we just need to do the PID tune. So I'm just going to copy my PID tuning command. Now you want to use the first PID tuning you want to do, where I usually do is for the extruder. And I usually run it at the temperature I print with most. Since a lot of the prints I do are PLA and I print on faster printers at 220 with PLA, I just want to run that PID command. So I'm going to run the PID command and PID helps, I guess, tune the nozzle. Well, let's just let that run and then look at the results. Now, once the PID is done, I can either put save underscore config in the console or I can just go up here at the top and hit save configuration. That will save the new PID values and basically reboot Clipper. So that's complete. The last check I want to do is the heated bed. Normally, I have a heated bed at about 60 degrees. So I'm just using a target of 60. I'll enter that in and let the bed heat up. So we've completed the bed PID tuning. I'm just going to hit Save Config. It reboots Clipper. Should come back up in a second. So there we go. And if we look, that is our last basic check. So once we've completed the basic checks, we can then move on to more advanced checks. And for that, I would recommend taking a look at Orca Slicer or Ellis's print tuning guide. Both of those are excellent. And my small contribution is the Clipper calibration spreadsheet. It's linked to the top of each of my spreadsheets so you can find it. And hopefully again, you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post below. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.